Good evening, everyone. It's Jeanette Martin, brand ambassador for the JD Farms Turkey Company. And I am so excited to be back with you Thursday. We've been a week and we've had a couple of, well, we had a holiday for July the 4th for our American uh, followers. We hope you had great celebrations with your family and your friends and you kept, kept yourself very safe and celebrate at all that it is to be an American. This week um, is a little play on a recipe that my sister um, made her kids and while she was going back to university as a mature student. And it was a recipe that she could make really quickly. She could use a little bit of um, protein. At that time, it could be some ham or turkey or um, oh, whatever protein that she wanted with lots of vegetables and stuff it in a pita pocket. And the kids could definitely participate in this. So this is a take and an homage to my sister. Um, she has taught me a lot as my, uh, my older sister. So this is, is for her. And that's my sister is CK. Um, so tonight's cast of characters happens to be with one of my favorite JD Farm sausage. I absolutely love and adore our apple brie sausages. Number one, I love them. Of course, our casings is vegetarian. Number two, there's no fillers in them. So there's no breadcrumb in them. It's just good brie cheese, Granny Smith apple, a little bit of seasoning, and of course, our really good turkey thigh meat that's in there. And I've cooked these, uh, pre-cooked these up. Um, they're slightly still a little warm. But what I really like about this, that if you wanted to make this pita pocket salad warm, perfect. But if you wanted to make a bunch up, so I've made up, there's four, in, uh, no, six in my package. This is a really good recipe for cold as well. Something really interesting happens with these sausages that when they're hot, they're very brie forward. So you know that lovely brie flavor? And when they're cold, the Granny Smith apple comes out in them. So either way, this is a very fantastic sausage and a great recipe. So I'm gonna use just one of them. I'm making this enough for one. Remember, I'm a single girl in my cute little cottage here in South Langley. And um, I may make this recipe again tomorrow with a cold sausage. So we've got our apple brie sausages that I pre-cooked from frozen in my little to toaster oven, 350 for about 25 minutes to make sure they're, um, they're cooked all the way through. So we're gonna make a buttermilk mint cucumber dressing to go with this. So if we think about the creaminess of that brie, we need a little bit of tang. So in that, I've got some good old fashioned dairy land. Always use a 3% buttermilk. In a, if you're going to make a dressing, you need that little bit of thickness and that viscosity um, for um, taste profile. A little bit of organic lime juice that I always carry because sometimes I don't have limes on hand. I need to go to the, I need to go to Ralph's Market or Nature's Picking um, to get some new, fr get some fresh vegetables over the weekend. Um, I've got about a, I'm going to say a 10 centimeter um, piece of English cucumber that I've left the skin on because I want that little bits of green in my dressing. One green onion. Um, I've got a little bit of um, grainy Dijon mustard. I like that in a dressing. It, kind of, it makes it a little thicker. And also the little bit of heat in there will be nice in the dressing. Some pepper is gonna go in the dressing. And now at JD Farms, um, we sell the motto seasoning. Motto seasoning, we say that wrong. And I love this seasoning because you know what? It's got mixed spices already in it of garlic powder, oregano, the turmeric, the orange peel, the dried cranberries, and the Himalayan salt in here. It's going to go in the dressing. Let's see. Oh, and of course, our beautiful fresh mint. And I'll show you how to properly chiffonade this to make it nice and small. And then the base of the salad itself I like to use a cabbage for this particular salad because I want that crunch. We're gonna have the softness of the sausage. Um, we're gonna have a little bit of red pepper sliced in there and some onion, um, some beautiful orange infused cranberries from Cranberries Naturally, um, and a little bit of, um, these are pickle, pickle peppercino um, uh, peppers that I have. Back to the cabbage. I like it because it's got that crispness to it. So we've got to have a balance of flavor. And that's why the salad is so spectacular is it just all the flavors. And every time you bite into it, there's a new flavor. And then the cut, and we're going to use a, a whole wheat pita shell. This is the one that has definitely the pocket inside. And I brought a piece of my 
kitchen equipment out that's going to be surprising on how you could eat these like this, you know, not toasted, or I guess, or not warmed up. But if you happen to have a waffle maker, I'm going to plug my waffle maker in. I'm going to put my pita shell in there and warm it up. Okay. So my favorite chef in the whole wide world is Mr. Alton Brown from the Food Network. Uh, about a month ago, I did one of his recipes online here. And um, he says you should never have a gadget in your kitchen and what's called a unitasker. So it only does one thing. So I've been known to make paninis in my waffle maker. And now I'm going to use it to warm up my pita shell. So let me get my waffle maker plugged in. Oh, and before I'm going to put my waffle or my waffle, my um, pita in, I'm just going to brush my waffle maker with a little bit of oil so we get a little bit of Christmas. You could do the same thing in a, um, in a dry frying pan. I just like the taste when it's warmed up a little bit more. So I'm going to plug it in. You're going to hear a beep. Oh, we're not going to hear a beep quite yet. My particular waffle maker is a thin waffle maker or what they call a, um, a European like a Danish, not, not Danish, a Norwegian waffle. Um, because you know what? At JD Farms, we sell Terrell's Tables waffles, which is a Norwegian-inspired waffle. So that's why I've got a waffle maker. And I also demo that product too. So I've just got it on. And I'm, this one comes with a temperature control. And I'm going to put it on at about three. I don't want to really cook this. I just want to use it to warm it up. So, and I'm going to cut this pita up ahead of time. Because I don't want to have to uh, try and cut a hot pita. So my pocket is going to be ready for me to stuff. Okay, so that's going to get ready to go. Let's make the dressing first. If while you're watching, you have any questions, please let me know. I'd love to answer any culinary questions you have. I did go to culinary school a million and a half years ago, back in the 80s. And, um, or any of the JD Farms products, because I've eaten them all, made recipes for them all. I think all of them. Um, or if you've got a recipe you want me to make, put it in the comments. Okay, so let's take the cucumber. I've got a grater. We're gonna grate it into my bowl. Put it all the way down. If you had a box grater, you could do this. Um, I don't like to make this dressing, say, in a Nutribullet or in a blender because of the texture. I want the little bits. Um, I wanna see kinda the texture in this dressing. Okay, what else am I going to put in this dressing? Oh, yep, I'm going to put, oh, where's my teaspoon? Let's get, save that, because we're going to need it for our carrot. I'm going to put maybe a quarter of a teaspoon, maybe a quarter teaspoon of grainy mustard. It's a grainy Dijon mustard. Um, a good teaspoon of that Matto seasoning in there. See, classic buttermilk uh, dressing always says like onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and pepper in it. Well, that's got it all in it. And it's got a little bit extra in there as well, and the turmeric, which is really good for us. I like it pretty spicy. So I'm gonna go, oh, maybe quarter teaspoon of grated pepper in there. I've got my lime juice. Give it a shake. Whenever you buy um, lime juice, a lot of the sediment, the good stuff is at the bottom, so I always give it a little shake. And open it up. I'm gonna use about a teaspoon. Teaspoon of that. My buttermilk, same thing about buttermilk. The solids tend to sit at the bottom. Let's give it a little shake. Could I use zucchini? I'm allergic to cucumber. Absolutely. It's just going to have a little bit different flavor. That's all. So quarter cup of that buttermilk in there. I've got some mayo as well. Oh, and my aunt is watching from Ontario. She's my super fan. Oh, and Grace. Hi. Grace, how are you, my friend, down in the United States? Did you have a good 4th of July? She's a Canadian, but she lives in the States. So we got about a quarter, quarter of a cup. That's not a quarter of a cup, Jeanette. Don't fool with the people. My mayo is not behaving. So there we go. About a quarter of a cup of the mayo. Let's see. Oh, and let's get that the mint in. I'm going to move this. So we're going to need that for meat so if you guys can see my board okay so this is called a fancy french word it's called a chiffonade and it means if you ever had herringbone floor it likes to means to cut very very fine um threads oh my waffle maker is ready so you want to stack up find your biggest 
piece of mint first, put it, um, put it stem side up, it's a little easier, find the next size, find the next size, find the next size, and you are going up so you have the absolute smallest. I have, I tend to like a minty flavor, so I probably have about eight mint leaves there. That one's not very good. Oh, here's another little one, a little one. And now you want to take and roll it very tightly, as tight as you can. You can do this with basil too, you know, when you make a bruschetta, you want to have it very fine. Because there's nothing worse than like a big pop of uh, mint in something. And you're gonna take your knife very, very tightly, watching your fingers, and cut it up in, oh, I'm gonna say, ooh, half a centimeter slice. So you'll see that it's very, very fine going into my dressing. Okay, let's get the rest of that out there. there and let me just double check that I have everything that I need for my dressing in here. Yes, okay, awesome. Take my whisk. And I'll show you what the texture, or the texture, or, oh, where's my spoon? So you'll see it's kind of a, a runnier sauce, and that's okay. Oh, Carrie's watching. Hi, Carrie. Carrie is um, the social media and a coordinator for Night Shift Ministry. So next Wednesday, I'll be at Night Shift. So I'm super duper excited. I love going to Night Shift for JD Farms. They're such a big supporter. I'm so blessed. Okay, so let's get our other veggies in here. Got my carrot. This is kind of a smallish carrot. And we just want to grate it in there as well. Think of some of the vegetables that you could kind of hide in here. You could do bean sprouts in here. Um, you could do chopped tomato in here. Radishes, daikon, daikon radish grated in here. Um, oh, what else? So much that you can do in here. Okay, so that's cleaned off. So we've got our carrot. Because think about we want smallish pieces because we're going to be stuffing it in that pita okay so i'm going to set that aside for now okay let's get oh a few of our peppers peppers in there now the onion kind of the same idea as the um the mint you don't want to have really big pieces so i am slicing it for my canadian friends i'm going to say Ooh, a quarter of a centimeter. We just want a nice, thin, thin, again, you don't want to have a big chunk of onion in your mouth when you're eating the salad. So I have, I'm going to say about a, um, about that much. So if you take a look at my thumb, about a thumb's worth for one person in here, sliced very, very thin, okay, very, very thin. If you ever find that onion is too strong for you, you can always cut it up, soak it in a little bit of water um, for about an hour and drain it. And some of that harshness out of the onion goes in the water. So that's a little trick for you. Okay, I'm gonna get my pita in. And what's Carrie saying? Hi Jeanette, we love you. Thank you for lifting up others and showing us how to cook great food. Oh, love you. You are so welcome, mademoiselle. Okay, so our peppers, similar texture. We just want nice little fine slices. I just happen to have a red pepper. You could use green pepper, yellow pepper, um, orange pepper in this. You could use um, like the Hungarian peppers in here. So again, I've got maybe a nice little palm full of sliced red peppers. So we think we got the heat, sweet of the carrot, the, um, the nice little sweetness of the red onion, or not red onion, red pepper. So the cabbage. Taking about, again, if you take a look at my palm, about a palm size full of cabbage, slicing it very thin, very, very nice and thin. It's gonna add a nice crunch in there. You could use red cabbage, Napa cabbage, you know, and if you didn't have any cabbage, but you had some sauerkraut, rinse it off and put that in there. That's what's beautiful. So you saw it cut up, it's about a good handful. Nice and thin as well. Oh, I'm smelling my pita. Got to keep my track them. Oh, yes. Yeah, so much better. So I'm going to unplug my waffle maker because I don't want my pita to cook anymore. Okay, so let's see. Oh, dried cranberry to your taste. 
I happen to like them. So let's do, and these ones are orange infused. And the difference between the other guys and cranberries naturally is theirs is the whole berry. The whole berry. And they're delicious. So maybe a quarter cup in there. Now let's take, let's just see before I use my chopping board for my turkey, which I'm going to have its own board. Always safety first when you're dealing with meat, even cooked meat. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot the, the onion. You know what? I'm going to use that as a bit of a garnish because I already have onion in there. So I've got everything in there except my sausages. So now I've got my sausage and I'm going to cut it in half. And then again, about a centimeter, a centimeter, because we want it to really mix through all the ingredients. So we get like that little bit of sausage and all those great vegetables and the, uh, the mint and maybe a little hint of that, um, that pepper, that peppercino. You could again use jalapeno, fresh jalapeno if you want. So if we were to take a look, again, we're about the same kind of uh, amount for as the cabbage. Okay, so I think, do we have everything in here? I think we do. Okay, now my spoon. Any other questions? Look at this, guys. You know, and right now, um, some of the hothouse peppers are coming out. We're getting so many great vegetables at our farmer's markets. Um, the, the one that's in Fort Langley is beautiful. Clayton Heights. Um, there's, of course, if you want to buy these sausages, if you can't get to JD Farms and you're washing around, number one, if your store doesn't carry it locally near you in BC, I believe that's where we distribute to, um, we are available at Nature's Pickens in Abbotsford, the sausages, Palm Market, um, Nature, uh, sorry, Nestor's, Nestor's Markets, Bilo Foods. Um, I think I've got them all. Yeah, because those are all places I've done demos before. And if you go into your local store and they don't carry them, oh, I think Stong's also carries them as well. Um, just give the store a call or you know what? You know what I love before I plate this up? We have an incredible street out in Langley. It's 248. If you ever want to have the best Saturday of your whole entire life, I call it Come Shop the Otter Trail Country Mall. If you start at the end, um, just as you come off the freeway by Thunderbird Stadium, sometimes you can catch a horse show and you can just, it's, you can just walk up and watch it. Then you come around the corner on 248th, you hit a honey place. You can get your honey, then you go to Crossberry Farms, get your berries and pies and veggies and have a good time there. There's also a winery there. Then you come to JD Farms. Then you come to Annie's Orchard. There's an orchard, I think that's what it's called. And you can get your apples. Then you get to Bonetti's. Then you end up at Co Otter Co-op where there is a, a beverage store, an adult beverage store and the co-op. So that whole street, you'll be able to get your shopping done and your shopping local. And it's a beautiful drive. And a little known fact, that it's actually the historic trail that led down to the Fraser River, where when the Hudson's Bay Company, when they came in on the um, in boats, they would come up that way to come into the interior. So pretty cool. It's a great, great drive. I took my sister down that last week and she's like, I've never been here. Okay, so we see, here's a little history. So you see, we're ready to get it into that pocket the pita pocket. You know what? I'm going to get rid of my cutting boards here. A little bit of bench cleanup, as I call it. Okay, and get my plate. Of course, I always like a white plate because it shows off everything so well. Just going to open up the pita pocket. If you had no pitas, you could do this with a wrap as well. But my sister always had pitas in her house. So we open up that pocket. I'm going to put a bit of that mixture inside there we go there's one ready to go i think i'm gonna have leftovers which is fantastic i've been known to eat leftovers for breakfast oh my pita got a little bit oh i left it too long oh this one's not gonna go you know what i'm gonna use a fresh one do one fresh that's real cooking here I want to show you before I finish this up. So this one's definitely 
I waited too long and my pocket sealed up. Okay, oh, that one's not. Sometimes these work and sometimes they don't. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So another one. Fill that up. Nice and good. And there we have it. So there we go, guys. Thank you for tuning in tonight to my talking turkey with uh, Jeanette Martin, the brand ambassador for JD Farms. I show it, I, I certainly do enjoy showing you my family recipes, coming up for, with recipes in my own home kitchen to inspire you to get back in that house in, um, you know, that, you know, the room with the four burners um, to cook something up tonight for your family. Because you know what, JD Farms, we want you to be safe. We want you to be healthful, eating really good healthful foods, supporting your local um, economies, and just creating amazing memories that are going to last a uh, long, long, long time. Because you know what? We're a three-generation company at JD Farms, and we want you around for years and years to come. So from my home kitchen in South Langley, God bless. And we'll see you next Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for another -ish episode of Talking Turkey with Jeanette Martin. Any questions if you're watching this on the replay, throw them in the comment. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye-bye.